think you've seen scares, get ready for the horror. The horror of the hyena wolf. <laughs> DC Comics is moving its offices from Burbank, California to a hot desk model. Now, your DC Comics had moved from the publishing capital of the world, New York City, to Burbank, California around 2011 or 2012 in an effort to go out here and synergize DC Comics with what they were planning to be the DC Extended Universe. Now, your DC Extended Universe was a response to Marvel Studios and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and what your Warner Brothers wanted to do was create an office where the DC publishers would be able to synergize with the films that Warner Brothers was producing as related to the DC Extended Universe. And at the time, DC was seen as a valuable asset to Warner Brothers, and as a result, your DC's offices were an elaborate three-story uh, office with lots of glass and lots of really high-tech stuff inside. So the, the DC offices were meant to go out here and give the creators a lot of energy so that they could go out here and create some really great comics. Unfortunately, the move to Burbank really did not help DC Comics be able to go out here and be successful, and it really didn't help the DC Extended Universe as well, because in the aftermath of the move to Burbank, the DC Extended Universe did not go out here and be as successful as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which became a major part of pop culture. No, films like Man of Steel underperformed, and other films like Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice just did not get the attention of fans the same way the MCU did. Now, while films like Wonder Woman, Shazam, and Aquaman did well at the box office, it did not really help the DC Extended Universe build as a brand. And in addition to your DC Extended Universe underperforming, DC's New 52 comics, which were supposed to reboot the DC Universe into a darker, grittier DC Universe, never really caught on with fans who were alienated since the initial reveal of the brand new Justice League designed by Jim Lee. And as a result of the new 52 going out here and alienating all of those comic fans, DC never really got to build momentum at, as related to their relaunch, and sales tumbled precipitously when compared to the gold, second golden age of DC Comics, the 1990s. And your DC's sales had tumbled so badly that your DC Universe had to practically be rebooted in 2016 with the convergence and the rebirth, but even then, sales still continued to drop, and your DC stopped being one of the most valuable brands in comics and the comic book industry, and has really fallen in value. Now, in that time, Warner Brothers has struggled as related to its film and TV business, and as it struggled, it was merged with AT&T. Now, after the AT&T Warner Brothers merger, your Warner was sold to Discovery after it was broken off from Time Magazine, and now your, as a result, your Warner, your Discovery is looking like it's trying to pare down many of the assets, and part of paring down the assets is going out here and realizing some of those assets don't have the value they originally had. And with DC Comics not having the value that it originally had back in the 80s and the 90s when they were making box office hits like Tim Burton's Batman or even in the early in the mid 2000s when they were creating the Dark Knight trilogy what your discovery is doing is looking to pare down those assets and use them much more effectively and it's a waste of space to have 
a three-story office in the heart of Burbank when you could use that space for something else because DC Comics are not selling like they used to and to use such an elaborate office space for a product that isn't selling isn't very isn't very smart so what your discovery looks like it's doing is they're paring down the DC offices and they're paring them down in proportion to the declining value of the DC brand so what they're doing is they're moving DC comics out of those big expensive offices and they're moving them to the hot desk model now this hot desk model is one that is where employees don't have their own desk and they just drift from place to place trying to get work done it's basically getting closer to treating your DC's editorial and staff like freelancers and making it where they work from project to project and they really have no real base but that fits right in line with what publishing is because as the publisher of SJS Direct most of my work is done online and I can get books to the marketplace from a laptop in my bedroom so if I can go out here and get books to the marketplace from a laptop in my bedroom and save lots of money DC Comics is looking to save that kind of money on employee salaries and office space because your DC Comics really they don't make as much money to, to, to have an office and pay all of that rent because many of your DC Comics don't sell very well I mean the only titles currently selling right now at DC Comics are Batman titles and Batman family titles like Nightwing and many other DC characters books are struggling in terms of sales so they have to find a way to minimize the cost on the publishing division and the best way to minimize the cost on the publishing division is to reduce overhead so that's the main reason why they're moving the DC Comics offices out of Burbank is to reduce overhead because they've been taking such losses on their catalog of books and the only thing that's possibly selling right now are reprints so in order to go out here and pay for those current books that are a part of the DC catalog what they're doing is they're cutting many of the uh, overhead costs so that they can continue to be able to publish because the only value that DC currently has right now because of the damage that was done due to Dan Didio launching the New 52 and Warner Executives launching the New 52 to reboot the DC Universe is the intellectual property rights and those intellectual property rights as I see it look like they're declining in value because many DC fans have walked away from DC Comics and outside of Batman most DC Comics fans no longer see DC superheroes as relevant so they are looking to find ways to lower the value of the asset that they have and they're looking for ways to try to minimize it so they can try to generate some sort of revenue off of the DC catalog now this is a sad state of affairs for DC Comics because I remember back in the 90s how highly valued the DC brand was coming out of the 1989 Batman movie and over the course of the 90s the DC Comics brand was considered an extremely valuable asset to Warner Brothers but that value has declined over the years I mean I remember in the mid 2000s DC was still a asset with things like the Dark Knight trilogy and it was also an asset with merchandising like DC Direct and DC Universe Classics unfortunately due to mismanagement the DC Universe Classics line ended around 2011 and DC Direct which was creating a lot of revenue through its action figures wound up ending I think about 2017 or 2018 and we DC Comics has not really recovered from the reboot of its universe 
in the New 52. Ever since the New 52, the DC brand has declined in value, and those alienated comic fans have not returned to the DC brand. They started to return with DC Rebirth for a moment, but once they saw the same Dark Dan Didio model come back in 2018, those fans left and never really came back. And as a result, the DC Comics brand has fallen in value to the point where they are now looking to, again, cut their office space. And by cutting the office space, this is actually a message that the DC brand does not have the value that it used to have. And it's a sad fall from grace, especially if you remember the DC of the 1980s and 1990s, which gave us Tim Burton's Batman and gave us the a lot of great comics and a lot of great merchandise. And that era sadly looks like it's ending on a whimper and it's looking like the DC brand has fallen back into the darkest days since the 70s with the DC implosion. And that's what's looking like is happening here, moving to the hot desk model, which basically says that these employees are basically freelancers and being treated like freelancers where they just work wherever they need to and they and and those who are working at home will just work on their comics at home you'll have writers like myself they'll be working at home on their scripts artists working at home on the comics and editorial possibly just working wherever they are photoshopping and putting stuff together and getting the books to the PD, uh, created to be PDFs and then sent up to a server. So the whole model of publishing is changing as related to DC Comics. And it's looking like to me they're going to go the way that I do with SJS Direct, where you're just working with freelancers and then putting everything together with Photoshop, uploading it to a site, and then you will just let the comic shops go out here, order what they want, They'll have it delivered, but there won't be any core office space because DC Comics is not really a priority. The publishing division isn't a priority for your discovery, and your discovery basically sees IPs and merchandising as the core of their business. And because they see merchandising and licensing as the core of their business, these DC Comics that are out here they're primarily only going to be published basically to keep a trademark. And the only reason why they're going to go out here and publish those comics is basically to protect their intellectual property rights. So I really see this as the start of things as related to the downsizing of DC Comics. And I see DC Comics basically starting to pare down their catalog due to the poor sales because... Many DC books don't even get into the top 50 these days outside of Batman titles. So, in addition to the moving of DC Comics to this California location, I see them paring down their catalog as well. And we may only see maybe a dozen monthly titles from DC at this point to keep the catalog very lean. And we may see a lot more miniseries and maxi series in an effort to just keep these characters in print and say that the trademark is still active. That's the way things are going on DC Comics right now as I see it because it just costs too much to go out here and continue to print comics that really don't generate any revenue for a publisher. And with 90% of books failing in the publishing world, it's just smarter for a publisher to go out here and pare down their catalog down to just a few titles that come out monthly and then do something possibly like a Shonen Jump stuff story book where they feature a lot of characters in different stories just to keep the trademarks going or go out here and publish maybe a maxi series or a mini series here or there or a graphic novel that will allow them to keep these IPs afloat. So that's basically where I see DC Comics going because DC really is in a really serious state of decline. The brand has fallen 
really off over the last couple of years and it's a pale shadow of its former self when you compare it to the days of the late 80s and the early 90s which basically were like a renaissance when you look at them today from a panoramic perspective now this is really sad as related to dc comics because as i see it dc comics should be up there as related to their brand with the mcu and sadly they don't have they have not still don't have that visionary to set a course for dc comics set a direction for dc comics because it was possible to turn the dc brand around but at this point with so many editorial bad decisions it is it, next to impossible at this point because a lot of creators would have to go out here and wade through so many bad stories and so many bad concepts to get dc back on track and it would take at least maybe two to four years to get this dc brand back on track because you have to go out here and fix all of that continuity issues and continuity baggage and that's just a nightmare for, to deal with and most creators like myself we just don't want to deal with all of that baggage and all and have to try to rebuild this entire structure and then what will happen is warner will just tear it apart once more discovery will tell her it apart so that's why most creators are now just walking away from these companies like dc comics and deciding to go create their own intellectual properties and go out here and create new properties because dealing with these old properties and all of the baggage and all of the editorial issues is just not worth the time so it's sad to see dc comics wind up like this but this was something that was a decade in the making the decade and a half of dysfunction of dan didio led to a lot of damage to the dc brand and this cost them licensing cost them merchandising and now it's looking like it's costing dc their offices and it look and as i see it that we may eat this is just the beginning of the end of dc comics which outside of a miracle won't be coming back for another renaissance or golden age now if you want to see me make more comic related videos like this you can donate to my patreon my paypal or my cash app by clicking the links in the description box and if you want to pick up some of the action-packed fantasy on the sjs direct imprint like the isis series the e-steam series the john haynes series or the books of the spinsterella trilogy you can find those books on amazon.com in paperback and kindle format you can also find them on smashwords the ibook store and google play that's all i have to say for this video you can comment rate and subscribe coming to paperback and e-readers isis legacy the sorority secrets of the goddess next door are revealed in this all new isis series adventure pre-order your copy of isis legacy on amazon.com today